Hi everybody, um, this is Chris Stewart here. I thought that I would uh, um, do a little video on how I would work out the Tennessee Waltz. Um, this is uh, based on Sierra Hall's version in uh, C and uh, in it. so let's listen, let's take a listen. So she's not doing straight um, to the song, uh, and I think the first thing I would do is just uh, know the song so and, and uh, figure out the chords. So uh, it's in C. I was dancing to my darling, you know, and there's probably going to a C7. Uh, I was dancing with my darling, darling, uh, and that's uh, playing the C7 in the first position. I don't like it too much, and and uh, just listen to her. I I think she's doing something more like this. I was dancing with my darling, covering the second fret uh, middle two strings CF and G, I introduced him to my darling, and while they were dan dancing, my friend stole my sweetheart from me. I remember the night, and that goes to E there. I I remember the night and the band F that was playing. I know just how much I have lost. And and you could add a, a G7 there till you go. So that's playing some chords in the first position, and now you can go up into the middle of the neck, and here's a C right here. I was dancing with my darling to the Tennessee Waltz F when an old friend I happened to see. That's a G. I introduced him with my darling. somewhere in the middle and we need something up high so um, let's see we know that's the bottom of the C there so that's a C I was dancing with my Um, 
stretch less. With my darling. But still, it's easy right there. I just saw it keep that same shape. I was dancing with my darling. To the to the and let's see if we go up one to the Tennessee walls and that's the F when an old friend I happen to see and that's a G so so this shape is just an extension of that shape. And if I moved up, that's an F, and that's just an, you know, one above that, and then the G, uh, G and the G. So, um, um, and an E. Um, let's see. There's an E right there, or there's that uh, E that we're playing back here. So, uh, I remember the night that E sounds better than going down. So I would pick that. I remember, I remember the night and the band. Back on track here. What happened? Something didn't sound right anymore. Oh, yeah. So that took me a while to work out. Uh, I remember the night and the band that was playing. I know just how much I have lost. So, mm, you know. See any other shapes there, but so that gives me uh, a high, low, uh, and middle where chords are, and um, and then uh, then we start working on the melody. So down in the first position, it's. Uh, melody in the first position and and uh, you know you always want to keep mind of the scale when you're when you're playing and so that you know reminds you of all the valid notes that you can you can play so here's the the C first C right there and the C right there So 
Next we want to go and find the melody in the middle position. So here's that C again. Instead of going you know, down, we're just going to go uh, stay up in the middle here. So. Um, So um, we know that's a C because that's where we in that scale. And uh, here it's a little bit different shape because we don't have a, the the major pattern, which is you know the uh, these two strings, these two strings. Uh, skip, you know, those two strings skip a frets, those two strings skip a fret, those two, and, and the next fret, those two. That's what I call the major pattern, and uh, I always like to find that. We've got, we've got one here, but it's two. Uh, we're going to run out if we play here. You don't want to just stay on that string. You want to be up in a group so that you know you're not having to. It's okay if you're if you're just going up for a slide or you're sliding up into the next position or something like that. But you don't want to have to pick up a tune on one string. So, um, so we're going to start here. There it is. And so that's a high position, and uh, so that gives us the melody in three different places and the chords in three different places. And uh, the next thing is to start adding double stops, and the double stops are all going to be, you know, based on pretty much based on the chord shape uh, with with some exceptions for for color and that kind of thing. So like I say, she starts there and instead of doing C7, she's doing, doing this. And, and this is you know, just part of that C.
do the same thing in this shape in the middle here, these chords are. And so, you know, just find double stops and, and what sounds sounds appealing to your ear and then do the same thing up there. Uh, and so that's how I would start on it and then and then uh, you know learn the melody and then and then you can start doing some and some harmony parts and and uh, and then if if I liked a certain expression that that Sierra did I uh, would you know find those tabs and see how she did it you know that's where I I saw saw this one uh, but I don't ever feel like I need to exactly copy somebody I would rather just do my own version uh, because often uh, you know if it's a if it's a real good player um, they're doing stuff that's just not easy for me to replicate. I'm not really fast, uh, and I'm not really good at slides and pull-offs and things like that. So I'd rather do a version that that is manageable for me, and then hopefully, as I get better, I can you know add add more uh, more ornament ornamentation to it. So that's how I'd get started, and, and uh, so that's good for this first video. I'll see you all later. Thanks.